Hello, and welcome back to Jenna Gets Creative. No face cam intro today because I decide to rearrange my planned upload schedule at the last minute to get this video out sooner than I planned. My March Scrawler box finally arrived! <laughs> I had been planning on releasing this video next week. Since I have come to count on them arriving so late for me, it's always at least five business days longer than the international delivery window, and I suspect that's part because I'm... Uh, in an island province, so everything takes longer anyway. But this box happened to arrive on Monday, April 15th, which, as you may know, was the day that the Cathedral Notre Dame de Paris was burning. I already knew the prompt in this box was Enchantress from seeing other posts, and I had been planning on a more mystical piece, but with the timing I wanted to do a bit of a Notre Dame tribute. I feel like the way Esmeralda is portrayed in Disney's The Hunchback of Notre Dame, and just the way the Romani retreated at that time in general, Enchantress is definitely a fitting word to describe her, so I decided to go with a minimalist style drawing of Esmeralda dancing with her hands up in the air, face turned up as if praying to the powers that be, and I put her in front of a mandala that is meant to resemble the large rose window in the front of the cathedral. For the line work, I was just working with the single pen the box provided, and it's a bit of a thicker line than I would normally do my details with, so I decided to only indicate Esmeralda's nose and chin, and I hope it reads that way on screen. On with the box contents before we get too far into this. Our featured artist this month is Emily Jarij, Jarij, better known to us on the YouTube art community as Sackwims, and fittingly for what I decided to draw, she's French. Be sure to check out her if you've never watched her videos. I've been a subscriber of hers for quite a while now and I do enjoy her work. I was excited to see that Scrawlerbox sent us both a colored print and a line work print. I'll be sure to scan the line work version before I do anything to it, but with the glossiness of the paper, I'm tempted to color it with my alcohol markers. For the box contents, I'll read straight from the menu card. Stedler Super Soft Colored Pencils Stedler have long been creating high quality pencils and have recently expanded their offering with a new art range. These classic hexagonal shape color pencils are manufactured from certified wood from sustainably managed forests. The super soft color LEDs give particularly high coverage, and the amazingly bright colors work effectively on both white and black paper. The suggested retail price is listed at £7.99 for the set. As usual, I'll have the box contents listed down below in the video description, with the prices converted to both USD and Canadian dollars. So this is a full-size 12-set box. It looks like this is exactly what you would get if you went to Walmart and picked up the 12-set in this line, and I do expect we'll be seeing this line at Walmart. They're really nice pencils to work with as far as school supply slash craft pencils go. I'm not sure if I would go as far as to say they're student grade, as in art student quality, but at the very least they do compare to Crayola, and they're very consistent with the other cheaper pencils I've tried from Stedler. I definitely still need to try them out on black paper. If I don't forget to try it before I edit this all together, I might insert a clip up in the corner of me swatching in my black paper sketchbook. Next up, Derwent Blender and Burnisher Pencils. The Blender Pencil is a soft, colorless pencil that allows you to blend two or more colors together. It mixes and smooths colors, so individual strokes and hard edges are softened. The Burnisher is a hard, colorless pencil, which, when used over layers of pigment, provides a rich, polished finish. Suggested retail price is £2.09 each, which works out to £4.18 for the pair. I've known about Derwent's blender and burnisher pencils for a long time, but I've never bothered to purchase them because I have a handful of Prismacolor Premier colorless blenders and I thought, how different could they be? Apparently quite different. <laughs> Prismacolor's blender is a soft lead and it feels very creamy and smooth when using it. 
It does a little bit of dragging and blending of the pigments, but mostly it's a stroke softener and a burnisher. Derwent's Blender feels a bit grittier when using it, but wow does it ever drag and blend those pigments. This thing puts Prismacolor's Blender to shame for calling itself a blender and not a burnisher. Derwent's Burnisher feels a lot more like the Prismacolor Blender, but it's definitely a harder lead, and it pretty much only burnishes. As I've been working on this piece, I've had to blend the colors that I need, and I've been using both the blender and the burnisher pencils quite a bit. I mix and smooth my blended layers with the blender pencil, and if you pay attention, you can really see the colors mix more and become smoother when I'm using it. And when I'm done a section, I polish it with the burnisher. We also got a Mobius and Rupert double hole sharpener. This wedge-shaped magnesium pencil sharpener has one hole for graphite pencils, 8mm in diameter, and one hole for colored pencils, 11mm in diameter. A premium artist quality sharpener with replaceable M&R quality blades, made in Germany from specialty hardened steel. Suggested retail price is £1.49. I'm going to be honest and admit I did not use the sharpener, and I feel like they only included the sharpener because the larger hole is meant to accommodate the YPO pencil, which I haven't got to on the card yet. I'm going to see if it works for crayons though, and if it does, I'm going to set it aside with the art supplies I've been collecting for my daughter to start using soon. She's 18 months old, so not quite yet, but at least she's finally scribbling with the crayons rather than trying to eat them. <laughs> Next up, Koinor 8750 Progresso Woodless Pencil. These lacquer-coated pencils don't have a traditional wooden casing, giving you a pure stick of color that can be used in many different ways. It has five times more coverage potential than a normal colored pencil and can be sharpened in any standard sharpener. The solid lead gives each pencil added heft, with each pencil weighing in at 12 grams. Suggested retail price is 70 British cents each. I tested to see if this pencil is water soluble, since often when you see a woodless colored pencil they are, but it doesn't appear to be. Admittedly, it's hard to tell with a white pencil on white paper, so maybe it is, I don't know. It doesn't have a lot of coverage power in terms of layering on top of the Stedler colored pencils we've been given, and it smudges the pen ink, but I used it for Esmeralda's blouse, and you can definitely tell which areas of the white paper are covered in the white pencil and which ones aren't. I think I'll get a lot of use out of this pencil for masking out white details in my watercolor and ink pieces. Our pen for this round is the Pilot V-Ball 0.7 Black. Not many pens can draw with the same ease as the Pilot V-Ball. The tough cone-shaped tip is resilient enough to take whatever life throws at you. The liquid ink gives a pure, dense color, and the ink regulator system ensures that the flow is consistent to the last drop. The 0.7mm tip gives a 0.4mm medium line, perfect for outlining your sketches and adding detail, before filling with color. Suggested retail price is £3.40. I was quite intrigued to see this pen, since it's branded so similar to my old Pilot V7 High Tech Point pen, so I compared them when I was swatching. It looks like the V-Ball pen is an upgraded system using the same ink as the old V7. I bought the V7 about a decade ago from my university bookstore, but at that point I was majoring in history, so lots of note-taking and essay writing, and I found the ink didn't dry fast enough for that. I kept getting messy smudges all over the place. But that's okay, because these pens seem to work right up to the last drop of ink no matter how old they are, so I get to use it now. I quite like it, and it's so nice to have this newer pen with the same ink. Now I know exactly what to look for when it comes time to replace it. We also got a YPO Jumble Graphite Pencil. This thick-barreled graphite pencil has an ergonomic, triangular design. The shape encourages correct grip for fatigue-free, effortless drawing. Not a standard pencil by any means, but maybe the size and shape will give you more control over your sketches. Suggested retail price is 39 British cents. If you've watched me do subscription box videos for a while now, you already know I really hate jumbo pencils. 
I prefer my sketching pencils to be as thin as possible, and I prefer a harder lead than what we've been given. It also doesn't erase completely without really scrubbing the paper, which is not ideal. I think this pencil would be better for gestural drawings and truly rough sketch work, rather than the construction base before a finished piece. Since I knew I was going to be doing a lot of small details with the Rose Window Mandela, I decided not to use the included pencil on my final piece. I used a combination of my lightest cola erase pencil, the one in the shade Copy Not Blue, and my tried and true Stedler Mars Lumograph sketching pencil in a 2H lead. By the way, since we weren't given an eraser, I am using my Tombow Mono Knock Stick Eraser. Finally, the paper. We were given a West Design sketchbook. An A5 stapled sketchbook with a pearlescent purple cover containing 40 140 GSM pages. The perfect place to create your very own coloring book. Suggested retail price is £1.59. I did my swatching in this book, including water solubility testing, and I must say I really like this paper. The texture is quite smooth, and at 140 GSM, it should be a great all-around mixed-media surface. It handled the light bit of waterwork I did without any buckling or warping at all. I would definitely be interested in testing this book with a watercolor sketch in the future. So maybe you'll see it again. <laughs> I kind of wish the brand and paper specs were marked on it somewhere, but at least Scrawlerbox included that information on the card. I usually don't do my finished pieces in small sketchbooks like this, and I did have to employ a binder clip to keep it open for swatching, so I decided to use my own paper for the finished piece. I'm working on half of a sheet from my 9x12 inch Canson XL Mixed Media sketchbook, so the sheet is six by nine inches, which is a little bigger than an A5 page. My finished piece definitely didn't need to be that size, since it's basically a circle, so when I scan it later I'll just edit it as just the circle, and it'll fit on all sorts of sizes and formats. Sorry if you can hear Dorothy in the background. <laughs> The intro blurb on the card says, This month we are delving into the world of coloring, and although we are giving you a sheet to color, we also want you to create your very own coloring project. Be inspired by our feature artist and create, copy and save, a piece of work that could be colored over and over again in different ways, by you and your friends. Scrawler tip. To get an even flat color with your pencils, try using them against the grain. If you always color in the same direction, you are more likely to see the pencil strokes. Try coloring or blending in the opposite direction and see the difference it makes. I did scan my piece at the line work stage both before and after I erased the pencil sketch bits because I wasn't sure if erasing would smudge the ink or not. Luckily it didn't, but that definitely does mean I followed these instructions here and created a coloring page even though I didn't read this blurb until just now. <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below if you want me to upload the line work to this one for you to try out. Since it's technically Disney fan art, I don't dare sell it, so I don't mind putting the line work out there for free. The challenge for this box, as I mentioned earlier, is Enchantress. Did you get this box? If you did, let me know where I can find your work so I can see what you did with it. And if you didn't, you could always try to mimic it no box art box style. <laughs> so I figured since my piece is a tribute to the Cathedral Notre Dame de Paris, on the week that it was damaged by fire, I thought I would talk a little bit about the Cathedral and summarize what we know about the fire, the damage, and plans for restoration as far as we know right now. Construction began in 1160 and was completed in 1260, though it was modified after that. Of course, most of the world outside of Paris started to take notice of it with the popularity of Victor Hugo's novel Notre Dame de Paris, published in 1831, which of course is the basis of the plays and films titled The Hunchback of Notre Dame in English, including the Disney film I'm alluding to here with the design for Esmeralda. The popularity of the novel led to a major restoration work on the cathedral from 1844 to 1864, and this is when the spire was added. Sadly, that spire collapsed during the fire this week, 
The cathedral is the most visited monument in Paris today, surpassing even the Eiffel Tower with over 12 million visitors a year. It is definitely one of the world's most recognized symbols of Paris. The fire on the 15th of April also damaged the oak roof, along with the collapsed spire as mentioned. Firefighters say that had the blaze not been contained when it was, the cathedral was about 15 to 30 minutes away from irreversible structural damage and would have been in danger of collapse. Thankfully, the facade, towers, walls, buttresses, stained glass, and pipe organ were all saved. The statues that are normally on the spire had previously been removed for cleaning, as the cathedral was under construction, so those were not damaged. Firefighters were also able to save many relics from the building before fire damage caused sections of the stone ceiling to collapse as the spire and wood roof burned away. French President Macron has vowed that the cathedral will be restored and has called for the work to be completed within five years. At this time, it is believed that all of the remaining stonework is structurally sound. Approximately 500 firefighters worked to save the cathedral and the relics and artwork it contains, and unfortunately at least one of them was seriously injured by the fire. At this time, the exact cause of the fire is unknown, but it is not believed to be linked to the string of vandalism and arson that has afflicted many other Catholic churches in France this year. If it turns out to be the result of an accident relating to the construction work, insurance is in place for the contractors. Additionally, several billionaire individuals and companies have pledged over 300 million euros to help restore the cathedral. Thank you so much to those donors, including François-Henri Penel, Bernard Arnal, and Ubisoft. To the firefighters who worked so hard to save the cathedral and its relics, and my sincere well wishes to the firefighter who was injured. If you're new here, please do subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. It won't sound anything like the bells of Notre Dame, but it'll let you know every time I upload, which is Tuesdays and Thursdays. I also have bonus videos from time to time, and although I am primarily an art channel, I do occasionally venture into crafts, tutorials, and related product reviews. I'm also going to start reading funny Amazon reviews and various stories from Reddit during the voiceover portion of my art videos that don't inspire enough of their own instructional review or personal story narrative. If you liked this video, comment down below and don't forget to hit the like button. I really do appreciate it, I love reading your comments, and I do my best to reply to everyone as soon as possible. I'd love to see what you did with this box if you got it, or what you do to replicate it no box art box style if you didn't. And I'd also love to see any tribute work you've done in the wake of the Notre Dame fire. Comment down below to let me and all your fellow viewers know where to find your art. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll be back on Tuesday, either with the art video I intended to show earlier this week instead of the No Box Art Box video, or the craft video that was meant to go out today. Bye guys!